simply by gaining mastery of human language, AI has all it needs in order to cocoon us in a matrix-like world of illusions. Don't put your happiness into the future. The future is probably not that long at this point, but none know the hour nor the day. You've spoken out saying that AI could manipulate or possibly figure out a way to kill humans? H how could it kill humans? We f***ed up. It is beyond an emergency. It's the biggest thing we need to do today. The era of artificial intelligence is here, and boy, are people freaking out. Fortunately, I'm here to bring the good news. AI will not destroy the world, and in fact, may save it. These are the words of American tech entrepreneur, software engineer, and self-proclaimed AI accelerationist, Mark Andreessen. Last month, he published an essay called Why AI Will Save the World. In contrast to the future of Life Institute's open letter, Andreessen's essay argues for the acceleration of AI rather than slowing it down. While they both agree that AI is a powerful tool with the potential to benefit humanity and that we should be careful about how we develop and use it, they disagree when it comes to several existential risks that continue to be raised by a more pessimistic group known as AI doomers. But what are these risks exactly and are they cause for true concern or not? Perhaps the future is much brighter than many of us think. In this video, we'll be exploring artificial intelligence through the lens of one of the world's most optimistic accelerationists and why he thinks AI will save the world. There's something in the national mood in the last five years, 10 years, that has really put people on edge. Concerns get blown out to levels of just hysteria and paranoia that I just kind of find staggering. And I think it's extremely dangerous. The Doomers had a run for a while. I decided finally I had, to, I had to put my two cents forward. At the core of Mark's reasoning is the unique opportunity AI offers to augment human intelligence in extraordinary new ways. If we choose to take advantage of this opportunity, then we may be able to increase our standard of living well beyond what we've already achieved as a species. Contrary to the bloodthirsty killer robots that often appear in movies and mainstream media, Mark views AI as quite possibly the most important and best thing our civilization has ever created. He also offers a whole list of enticing predictions for this new era of intelligence augmentation. Luckily, none of them involve sending us to an early grave. Every kid from now, you know, for the, you know, the next millennium is going to start out life with an AI teacher, tutor, assistant, coach, mentor, friend, ally, mm -hmm. right? Who is going to be right there at their side every step of the way. I mean, it's just like, it, it maybe is like the single biggest thing that's ever happened. Breakthroughs in every conceivable field will lead us to the development of new technologies, medicine, and a golden age of artistic expression. Solutions to some of the world's most pressing issues, such as climate change, disease, and economic disparity will no longer be a distant hope, but a reality for all. Even during times of conflict, AI will be there to help military commanders and political leaders make better decisions, minimizing risk and unnecessary bloodshed. Humankind will scale to new heights, not only within our solar system, but perhaps beyond it as well. Admittedly, some of these predictions do sound a little too good to be true. I think it's important to note here that Andreessen doesn't think there is absolutely nothing to be concerned about, but rather he believes that moral panic by its very nature is irrational. He argues that many past technologies from electric lighting, the automobile, the internet, and even the discovery of fire itself have all been met with some degree of fear and uncertainty. Historically, I would say virtually all new technologies have turned out to be net, net positive, at least from where we sit today. By the way, many of those have transformed society, right? And so there are certainly a lot of people who are on the receiving end of gunpowder who would say that it was not net transformative. But nevertheless, gunpowder is one of the things that led to societies, you know, basically growing up into the nation state that we have today. Instead of projecting our fear and uncertainty onto emerging technologies, Andreessen recommends we shift our focus to those who use this moral panic to advance their desire for power, control, and financial benefit. Everyone asks, who is the Antichrist? But for the first time in history, maybe we should be asking, what is the Antichrist? Could he be a created being using artificial intelligence? Next, don't go away. Call now and get Mark Bilt's powerful brand new book, Decoding the Antichrist and the End Times. During the alcohol prohibition era of the 1920s, there were two groups called Baptists, 
and bootleggers. The term Baptists refers to passionate social reformers who wholeheartedly believe in implementing regulations to prevent possible societal doom. Back then, these were devout Christians who felt that alcohol was destroying the moral fabric of society. In today's world of AI risk, these are the AI doomers who really do believe that these technologies pose an imminent threat to humanity. On the other hand, bootleggers are opportunists. During Prohibition, these were the people who made loads of money selling illicit alcohol to Americans after legitimate alcohol sales were banned. Andreessen classifies these bootleggers as anyone who stands to gain financially from spreading moral panic about AI. This could be CEOs who may benefit from regulatory barriers that create a monopolistic environment against new competitors. Or it could even be bootleggers masquerading as Baptists being paid to attack AI by their universities, think tanks, activist groups, and media outlets. The real downside of these groups lies in the manipulative tendencies of bootleggers who exploit Baptists to further their own selfish interests, often leading to undesirable outcomes. You know, the whole thing was this like giant misadventure. Uh, the Baptists got taken advantage of by the bootleggers and the bootleggers got what they wanted and, and that was that. The same two categories of folks are now uh, sort of suggesting that uh, uh, the development of our Artificial intelligence should be regulated. 100%. Yeah, it's the same pattern. And, and the, the, the economists will tell you it's the same pattern every time. Like, this is what happened with nuclear power. This is what happened, in, which is another interesting one. But, like, yeah, this is this happens dozens and dozens of times um, throughout the last hundred years. And, and, and this is what's happening now. So, what are the real risks to developing AI, according to these Baptists and bootleggers? Are they right or are they wrong? Risk number one AI will kill us all. Whether it be the Greek myth of Prometheus, Frankenstein or the Terminator himself, the fear that technologies of our own creation will rise up and destroy us is deeply ingrained in our culture. Andreessen argues that these interpretations portraying AI as potentially destructive often overlook its transformative benefits and appeal more to emotional distress than rationality. He argues that AI fundamentally is a non-living construct of code and mathematics, built, owned, used and controlled by humans. The notion that it might suddenly develop its own consciousness and try to kill us is nothing more than superstition. Even so, there are firm believers in the killer AI theory who advocate for extreme measures ranging from development bans to calling for full-on military airstrikes on data centers. Their arguments often boil down to, you can't prove that it won't happen, which Andreessen views as entirely unscientific and a call to unnecessary violence without being able to prove these claims through testable hypotheses. This is what cults are. This is how cults form as they form around some theory of the end of the world. And so the People's Temple cult, the Manson cult, the Heaven's Gate cult, you know, what they're all organized around is like, there's going to be this thing that's going to happen that's going to basically bring civilization crashing down. And then we have this special elite group of people who are going to see it coming and prepare for it. It's all future hypothesizing. Mm -hmm. It's not science. Risk number two, AI will ruin our society. The second popular existential risk suggests that AI could disrupt our society, causing extensive harm without necessarily leading to human extinction. The fear shifts from killer robots to the spread of hate speech and misinformation. Recently, the focus of these risk discussions transitioned from AI safety to AI alignment, which is more concerned about societal damages than causing physical harm. But if AI needs to be aligned, whose values exactly should it align with? Andreessen draws parallels from social media to offer further insights. Social media platforms have been under massive pressure from governments and activists to restrict, ban, censor, and otherwise suppress a wide range of content for many years. He believes the same concerns over hate speech and misinformation are being directly transferred from social media to this new frontier of AI alignment. From these ongoing disputes known as the social media trust and safety wars, he comes to two conclusions. First of all, unrestricted free speech is unrealistic as some content is universally deemed illegal or inappropriate and therefore requires restrictions. Secondly, once a framework for restriction is established, an array of organizations will start demanding increased censorship. From his perspective, the slippery slope from selective regulation to excessive censorship isn't an exaggerated fallacy, but a realistic inevitability. You know, look, would I like to live in a world in which, like, everybody was nice to each other all the time and nobody ever said anything mean and nobody ever used a bad word and everything was always accurate and honest? Like, that sounds great. Do I want to live in a world where there's, like, a centralized thought police working through the tech companies to enforce the view of a small set of elites that they're going to determine what the rest of us think and feel? Like, absolutely not. Risk number three, AI will steal our jobs. According to research conducted by Oxford University, nearly half of all current jobs in America, 47% of all our jobs, 47% of U.S. jobs in the next, next decade or two, according to researchers at Oxford, 
will be replaced by robots. Despite historical evidence showing that significant technological advancements typically lead to job creation and wage growth, moral panic directed towards mechanization, automation, and computerization causing widespread unemployment has persisted for hundreds of years. Andreessen explains how this fear of automation is based on what's called the lump of labor fallacy. And this is sort of the fallacy that there is a only a fixed amount of work to be done in the world. And if the and it's all being done today by people, and then if machines do it, there's no other work to be done um, by people. And that's just a completely backwards view on how the economy develops and grows. Um, because what happens is not, in fact, that. What happens is the introduction of technology into production process causes prices to fall. As prices fall, consumers have more spending power. As consumers have more spending power, they create new demand. That new demand then causes capital and labor to form into new enterprises to satisfy new wants and needs. And the result is more jobs and higher wages. Andreessen points to this quote from American economist Milton Friedman and reassures us that despite increasing efficiency and productivity, the market will never actually reach a point of full satisfaction. Therefore, the introduction of artificial intelligence and labor has the potential to spark a new age of unprecedented economic prosperity. Costs of goods and services will decline towards zero, enhancing consumer welfare and spending power in the process. This will ultimately encourage entrepreneurs to innovate and employ people to meet this never-ending demand. Risk number four, AI will lead to crippling inequality. The idea that AI development might lead to job losses and wealth inequality is similar to a central theory of Marxism. However, unlike Marx's assertion that the bourgeoisie would hoard the societal wealth, Andreessen explains that in reality, companies are actually incentivized to do the opposite. The way you make the most money in any business is by selling to the largest market you can possibly get to. The largest market you can possibly get to is everybody on the planet. And so every large company does is everything that it can to drive down prices to be able to get volumes up to be able to get to everybody on the planet. Tesla's strategic price reduction strategy is a prime example of this phenomenon. Elon Musk maximized his profits and became the wealthiest person in the world by catering to as broad a market as possible. First, he built an expensive sports car. He then invested those profits into building a more affordable car. Only to reinvest that money again to build an even more affordable car. Andreessen does not dispute the fact that inequality is a serious issue in our society, but that it's simply not being driven by technology. On the contrary, it's being driven by the sectors of the economy that are the most resistant to new technology and that have the most government intervention. The actual risk of AI is not that it will cause more inequality, but rather that we will not use it as a means to reduce it. Risk number five. AI will lead to bad people doing bad things. Among every existential risk within the world of AI doomerism, there is one that Andreessen actually does agree with. Whether it be criminals and terrorists or hostile governments, any technology can be used for evil. Despite calls to ban AI to mitigate these risks, he believes it's impractical to do so given that math and code are not exactly hard to come by. Instead, he proposes two key strategies to handle these risks effectively. First, we should focus on leveraging our existing legal frameworks rather than considering an outright ban. If a previously unforeseen harmful use for AI is identified, we can simply legislate against that specific application. Secondly, we should utilize AI as a means of defense against malicious activities. He argues that it can be a tool for maintaining societal security when used by individuals with noble intentions. By redirecting the energy spent on attempting to ban AI towards deploying it for defensive purposes, Andreessen believes we can ensure a safer AI-enabled future. Number six the ultimate risk. There is one final AI risk, which Andreessen firmly believes is far more threatening to the future of humanity than anything else we've covered so far. The single greatest risk is that China wins global AI dominance, and we the United States and the West do not. The Chinese Communist Party already has a well-documented history of using AI-powered technologies such as face and voice recognition, social media monitoring, and DNA collection to surveil its citizens, suppress opposition, track religious minorities, and control the flow of information wherever they deem necessary. But that's not all. They have a completely publicized plan for what they're going to do with AI, and it is not what we have in mind. And not only do they have that as a vision and a plan for their society, but they also have it as a vision and plan for the rest of the world. Their plan is what? Surveillance? 
ones. Yeah, authoritarian control and surveillance and enforcement, social credit scores and all the rest of it. You are going to be monitored and metered within an inch of everything all the time. And it's going to, you know, it's basically the end of human freedom and that's their goal. And, you know, they justify it on the basis of that's what leads to peace. Both the Chinese state and the American state have decided that AI and autonomy are the future of warfare. The private sector in China is owned by the public sector. It's owned by the Communist Party. And so they have this, they have the advantage that they can directly control the entire productive capability of their system against, you know, their, their military needs, which is, which is what they're doing. We don't have that. You know, we have, we have at least in theory a free market system. Historically, the U.S. system has led to a much, much faster rate of innovation than the centralized Soviet system did or the centralized Chinese system has. My, my argument is just very straightforward, which is uh, we should unleash the animal spirits of our private sector and our, and our, and our defense sector in the same way we did during the Cold War. We should have a, an absolute determination to, you know, just completely swamp the Chinese centralized system um, uh, in terms of the quality of our AI. Allowing irrational fears of bloodthirsty, job obliterating, or disparity-inducing AI to hinder our progress could actually be the very opposite of what leads us to safety in the future. Like it or not, a new era of artificial intelligence is here. Of course, some of you may not agree with Mark Andreessen's take on the future, but personally, I'm glad that there's an open dialogue happening between people in the community. As these technologies reach new levels of complexity and sophistication, we should always be mindful to never isolate ourselves from alternative viewpoints based on philosophical or moral affiliations. This will only become increasingly counterproductive when trying to find solutions to future problems. Some days I feel more like an accelerationist, and other days I feel more like a tumor or even a combination of the two. But the more I learn about AI, the more I realize that nobody actually knows what's going to happen next. If I've learned anything from Mark Andreessen, it's that we should never let fear control our future. Fear is the mind the killer. If you've made it this far, we really appreciate your support. Comment below with the word 100% so we know you've watched the entire video. To learn more about artificial intelligence, science and technology, don't forget to subscribe. And while you're at it, why not watch our next video here?